what you're reading. Chasm City. Cool, cool. Sci-fi, hmm, different for you. How hard is it? Excuse me? <laughs> the sci-fi, how hard is the sci-fi? Oh, um, it's pretty flexible actually. I mean, how hard is the science? Oh, uh, yeah, I knew that. Um, how hard is the sci-fi? Somewhere between Exosuit and the Greg Egan effect. Oh. Wait. What? The term hard sci-fi is sometimes thrown around without much explanation about what the hard part actually refers to, or how it's different to soft sci-fi. In a nutshell, how hard a piece of science fiction is can be determined by how a story utilises well, the science, whether that's physics or technology or other, and how accurately and rigidly it adheres to real world rules. By real world here, I mean the constraints of the known physical laws of the universe that we inhabit. While the term has nothing to do with how hard it is to read, it's common for harder sci-fi to be more challenging simply because of these very technically accurate concepts. So you'd think that this would be a pretty simple thing to determine. On the one end you've got ultra-realism science right down to the quantum level, and on the other you've pretty much got what we call fantasy. I mean, quite obviously Harry Potter didn't use science to destroy Lord Voldemort, did he? Or did he? What if, when baby Harry became the boy who lived and inadvertently Voldemort's final horcrux, what actually happened was a transference of the bioengineered nanotechnology that pervaded through Voldemort's body, directed out through the universal metamorphic hardware device, also known as a wand, infecting Baby Potter through a series of viable hyperclusters, causing a mimic personality download using Baby Potter's own neural networking as a storage device. Just something to think about. What I mean to stress is that just because a piece of technology isn't able to be readily explained by today's physical laws or discoveries up to this point, it doesn't mean that the principles might, that might lead to this technology don't already exist, but they just haven't been discovered yet. In fact, lots of sci-fi on the harder side often does include technology that looks flat out impossible against what we know about physics today. You can see this repeatedly in the form of faster than light travel, which is a theoretical impossibility. Arthur C. Clarke, one of the definitive hard sci-fi writers from the Golden Age, coined the maxim, a sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. This is something Clarke embraced, specifically at the end of his novel 2001 A Space Odyssey, and also the film, where the technology and seemingly physics-breaking occurrences seem to us like magic. Up until that point, however, the physics and the science were painstakingly meticulous in their realism. Shift your mind to the perspective of someone living 200 years ago. Now, imagine how your life would seem to them. Imagine how they would view your car, or your smartphone, the internet, your TV. Imagine seeing their face as they look up to see a plane flying overhead. These would seem like magic, wouldn't they? And if this wasn't enough to muddy the waters of sci-fi hardness, you also have to take into account how often things change in terms of widely accepted theories. What a writer in the 1940s wrote might have been cutting edge at the time. They might have applied meticulous research that was disproved years later. How hard should this sci-fi be considered? So with these variances in mind, I've come up with the book odyssey scale of science fiction hardness. I know, catchy, right? I adapted this from the Mose scale of science fiction hardness, which was put together by tvtropes.org. I'll leave a link in the description because it's really interesting, but just to warn you, you may get lost in all the hyperlink rabbit holes. Mose scale of science fiction hardness is a parody of Mose scale of mineral hardness, which determines the hardness of minerals through the harder mineral being able to scratch the surface of the softer one. With the book Odyssey scale of science fiction hardness, I've attempted to simplify and adapt this a little. So starting at soft and increasing in hardness, we have level one, Babelfish. 
Sci-fi works that fall into level one Babelfish officially come under the category of science fiction, but are more often than that, science fantasy. The author explores concepts far outside the realm of accepted reality and makes no attempt at explaining the science behind them. Think of the Babelfish in popular science fiction novel, The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, an alien creature that is small, yellow, leech-like, which when you stick it in your ear, you can instantly understand everything said to you in any form of alien language. Also think of the substance Ubik in Philip K. Dick's mind-bending sci-fi classic Ubik as an example of sci-fi operating far outside accepted scientific laws. One up from Babelfish, we have level two, something something field generator. Sci-fi works that fall into level two, something something field generator, create a technology or substance that can be used ubiquitously to further the plot. There are consistent rules around the use and properties of this technology or substance, which are adhered to in order to create a sense of scientific credibility, despite there being no basis for this in our reality in our current time. Think of all the useful field generators that produce things like generic force fields, tractor beams, artificial gravity, anti-inertial fields, and anti-gravity fields. Also, all faster than light travel is likely to fall into this category too. One up from level something something field generator is level three, exosuit. Sci-fi writing that falls into level three exosuit, as in the previous level, uses the principle of something something field generator in creating a technology or substance to further the plot, but an attempt is made to bring it more in line with the physics of this reality using either real or invented laws. These real or invented laws may also be used in different contexts and situations throughout the story. As an example, think of the concept of powered armor in the form of Iron Man or in literature such as The Forever War or All You Need Is Kill. While these are speculative in their concepts, it's by no means beyond the realm of possibility that they will one day be invented. The next level of hardness up is level four, the Egan Effect. Sci-fi that falls into this category usually sticks rigidly to the principles of our own physics in terms of what we currently know, but focus on changing one or two elements in order to explore those differences or to further the plot. A number of sci-fi author Greg Egan's books delve deeply into the realm of physics and often consider how things might be different if something was slightly changed or different. In his book, Shield's Ladder, Egan uses a construction of differential geometry devised by the mathematician and physicist Alfred Schild and extrapolates cutting edge quantum physics and consciousness theory to create radical new versions of a post-human future, pulling in imaginary physics a step ahead of the physics that we know today. In his novel, Orthogonal, Egan makes one small change to the metric of space-time, then builds the story around the physical consequences. Leveling up from level four, the Egan effect is level five, Bassard Ramjet. Sci-fi works that fall into level five Bassard Ramjet use genuine speculative science or engineering that is, or was, widely accepted at the time of writing. The intention of the author is to stick unbendingly to the accepted science and theory and to make as few errors as possible when it comes to known facts. Think of works by sci-fi author Paul Anderson, and particularly his novel Tau Zero. In the story, Anderson employs the use of the Bussard Ranjet, an actual theoretical method of spacecraft propulsion proposed in the 1960s by physicist Robert W. Bussard. Later discoveries in astrophysics cast doubt on the feasibility of the ramjet, but at the time of writing, it was cutting edge. The next level up in hardness is level six, Clark's orbit. Sci-fi works that fall into this category employ level five Bussard ramjet techniques and all of the realism that comes with it, but they add a dash of level six Clark's orbit, where they take it even further, making predictions of the future and extrapolating from the current technology rather than inventing major new discoveries themselves. Sci-fi writer Arthur C. Clarke was able to do this to such good effect that through his ideas, he contributed to the popularity of the idea that geostationary satellites would be ideal telecommunication relays. The geostationary orbit is today sometimes known as the Clarke orbit or the Clarke belt in his honor. Then there is the seventh and final level in the book Odyssey scale of sci-fi hardness, and that is real life. Also known as non-fiction, 
For Level 7 real life, think NASA's Apollo project, CERN and the Large Hadron Collider, autonomous cars, drones and more. All the things that make reality stranger than science fiction. Let me know in the comments how real science is currently kicking sci-fi's ass. So that is it for the book odyssey scale of science fiction hardness. Now when anyone asks you how hard the sci-fi book you're reading is, you can say this sci-fi is totally Babelfish. Thank you.